don't even go out to the fields. Milk the cows. Yeah, milk the cows, <laughs> feed the chickens. Our group arrived at the Alta de Shade Company's George Gershel Farm in western Connecticut early in the morning, where we were given an up-close and personal look at the crop of broadleaf tobacco that will soon be ready for harvesting. Our host for the tour was Brandon, who manages the farm. First, we headed into the greenhouse, empty at this time, since all of the seedlings were now blooming in the adjacent field. Seedlings are moved from the greenhouse to the field after 56 days of growth. Here, Brandon is demonstrating how the seeds are placed in the soil trays by machine. Each tray has 96 pods, and the seeds are so small, they have to be tinted with red clay in order to see them. We'll pull it out, and we'll pile them up about 10 high. And the guy will carry them down, and we'll line them up in the greenhouse here. So we'll get about 40 acres worth of seed trays here, but, you know, everything's not perfect germination. So we'll, we'll end up with about 35 acres worth of plants out of each greenhouse. This is what the field looks like once tobacco has reached a height of about three and a half feet. In this shot, Brandon is explaining to one of the guests how he uses ladybugs to keep more destructive pests off the plants. Yeah, so they go after the aphids as their right. yeah. main source I've done of that in my house with the rose bushes and stuff like that. Have Absolutely. you ever done it yeah. where all of a sudden you'll have in like a corner of the house or something, there'll be just like a shitload of ladybugs? Yes, no, I my love son's that. room. All of a sudden you're just like, <laughs> <laughs> my there's son's ladybugs room. everywhere Freaking and it's yeah. so yeah. cool. Here, Brandon is showing us how they remove the flower tops of the plants, which makes them grow taller, thicker, and stronger. Yes. <laughs> you work no, for free? I would. <laughs> In another field, the broadleaf tobacco was harvested by cutting the plants at the bottom of the stalk. The stalks are then secured by hooks on wooden laths called cujes in Spanish, which are already on the truck that will take them to the curing barn where the leaves are cured on their stalks. At the curing barn, the stalks will be taken off the trucks and placed up into the rafters for drying, which you'll see shortly. Using a dried stalk, Edwin Rodriguez, supervisor of the farm's harvesting and curing operation, explains how the leaves are placed on the laths for curing. The plant like this, the first bottom leaves, we call them stemmings. When we take them, we put them separate, then the rest on another um, bunch, and then they pack them. And the stemming will go separate from the better tobacco, but they go through the stemming to look for any good tobacco, you know, any cigar. Yeah, yeah. You know, That's a dry stock. This is a dry stock right here. Yes, wow. correct. Got roughly between um, three and a half to four acres of um, crawly. At the peak, when we start hanging it, we go at 20, and the, the next year we go another 20, and then we go 18 and 18. And then we do the bottom scourge at 18. The reason we do it like that is to keep, you know, air moisture, right. air flow going through the sheds. We keep the windows open, the doors as wide as we can. And right now we haven't set up the burners, but eventually we will. And the burners is to help it, you know, cure a little bit faster. Here, Edwin demonstrates how the propane burners are set up for aiding the curing process with heat when there's too much moisture in the barn. So each takes about four here, four there, eight. Eight times 10, 80 burners. And you run them at night? Um, yeah, it, it might depend. It might depend, you know, you know, sometimes if we got a fire, then I, you know, 12 hours and I, the guy's going through the night shift. That's how come I got these facings here, guys. See, I got these faces here, so that way you can put the burners in between here. Dolly was telling us that you guys have to monitor the weather, the Yeah, monitor the so weather. Yeah. That's the cover we got the burners. If we get yeah. uh, rainy days, a lot of moisture, you want to put heat, we lock, lock it up and right. put heat to dry it up. Just to dry it up. Right, right. right. And then once the weather goes by, then we reopen it again to get out. plenty of air. Yeah. Gotcha. And how long does it take you This shed, it took us a good three days. We started... Um, Thursday and by Friday we had finished it, you know, with the crew we got, except, you know, we ain't got a... And, and how many individual stalks or plants do you have hanging in here? Right here, hanging? like I, like I said, we got about three uh -huh. and a half acres. Okay. So each acre is about between 6,000, 7 to 7,000 plants. Wow. Wow. Per acre. So 
A lot of plants, plants. A lot of plants <laughs> correct, yeah. And it's going to hang here like for eight weeks, nine weeks. And then uh, once it, you know, it's cured, then we take it down.